Hello, hello, hello. Today is Monday, July 15, 2024. Here follow the solutions to problem 206. A piece of clay hits a rod and the rod is let's say on a frictionless surface. It's not attached anywhere. This is extremely similar, almost identical to what I cover in great detail in lecture 21 of Edo 1. And I even do a demonstration. Instead of a piece of clay, I give the rod a push, in other words, an impulse, which is equivalent than a piece of clay. And then it starts to translate and it starts to rotate. And then the question is, what is the translational velocity and what is the rotational angular velocity? Sadly, I have to say that there were only two winners. Fersen Topramos, we've seen him before, not surprising, perhaps, and Karolz, whom we've also seen before. But many others whom we have seen before didn't make it. Uh, they slipped up somehow. When we see solutions that could be right or could be wrong, because it's a huge of mass, I sent them to Kies, Norman, and I sent them to Eugen, and then we all three decide whether they are correct or whether they are not. <laughs> and so there were five or six others that we all agreed, there were more than six, that they were wrong. Most of them have the translational velocity correct, of course, but not the rotational one. So here we'll follow Keith Norman's solutions, nice video, Solution as always. Yes, Keith has the problem right, and Eugen, of course, also has the problem right. That's all, just a given. As I also mentioned in lecture 21 of Edo 1, the problem can be solved in two different ways. There are two ways that you can use the conservation of angular momentum. And Kies was so kind to solve them in both ways. That's very interesting. And he also admitted to me that when he first did that, his two answers were not the same. <laughs> Uh, but he realized that they had to be the same, and so he worked a little harder on it, and then he wrote me a note and said, yeah, I got it, and they're both, both answers I know, the same. This is Keith's solution to Walter Lewin's problem 206. Uh, and I strongly suggest that everyone looks at his Lecture 21 of 801. It's entirely relevant to this, in particular the demonstration uh, at 23 minutes 50 seconds in, in that lecture. But he explains in great detail what is going on in a situation like this. We have a clay ball that strikes a rod, the rod is free to move, there's no pivot restricting it. Uh, the clay ball sticks to the rod and then they move as one entity. 
and it is an inelastic collision so energy will not be conserved for this system. If we consider the system of the clay ball and the rod like that the forces between the rod and the clay ball are all internal so that uh, there are no external uh, forces or torques on the system, the rod ball system. So we can say, even though energy is not conserved, linear momentum will be conserved and angular momentum will be conserved. Uh, we need to note though that when the clay ball sticks to the rod there will be a new, well there will be a centre of mass for the system and it's that centre of mass about which the clay ball and rod will rotate as I've shown here uh, and the centre of mass is going to be the only thing uh, I've shown the path here uh, the, the centre of mass will be the only point that travels in a straight line everything else will be rotating uh, it will have a velocity I've given it V prime and there will be an angular velocity about the centre of mass the new centre of mass of omega so first of all we're going to find uh, what x is where the centre of mass is it's simply going to be mass of the rod big M times x equals little m times L over 4 minus x which I do here there, simplifying I get x equals that. So that is now where the centre of mass uh, of the rod ball system is. I also use conservation of linear momentum. Uh, the rod is stationary so it's zero. Initially, uh, initially the clay ball has linear momentum mv. Finally the two are moving together so the centre of mass has linear momentum m plus m v prime gives me directly v prime equals that clearly in the same direction as v okay now we're going to uh, work out what omega is we need to know however that the moment of inertia of the system must be calculated about this point here um, which I will do now. So, conservation of angular momentum about the centre of mass of the system. Initially the rod is stationary so its contribution is zero. The contribution from the clay ball is this expression here and the final angular momentum of the system is going to be I omega where as I say I is, the, uh, is taken about the centre of mass, the new centre of mass. So uh, I know L over 4 minus X equals that. Uh, I use the parallel axis theorem on the rod and I also consider the contribution of the clay ball which gives me the value of I. I combine all this together and I get that expression here which I can simplify, I can expand out, cancel a few terms, uh, I then collect the terms and I get that expression here, I can clearly divide by m plus m which is always going to be greater than zero and I get omega which is that about the centre of mass of the system uh, and it's in that direction or using the arrow notation it's into the paper. Uh, and I note it is the spin angular momentum which if you watched lecture 21 you will know is an intrinsic property uh, and so it's not going to change no matter where we take uh, where we consider conservation of angular momentum okay so now I'm going to consider con conservation of angular momentum about here uh, clearly the ball now has zero angular momentum to contribute initially which is why I say that anywhere along that path angular momentum for the whole system remains zero all the time no matter what this is doing. So I now have zero contribution initially from the uh, rod 
and zero from the clay ball. The spin angular momentum, it's an intrinsic property, I can calculate as before. Uh, but I don't know what omega is. I will be the same value as before. However, I now have the center of mass of our system has a velocity v prime in that direction. So it contributes to the final uh, angular momentum. So if we consider our, our r cross mv, and remember now our r is in this direction, um, it's going to mean, and v is in that direction, it means that we're getting this. So the, the angular velocity vector is out of the paper, whereas I've defined omega into the paper, which means we get a negative term. We've got the distance there, uh, we've got the combined mass, m plus m, and we've got the velocity, v prime. So this is the term due to the moving centre of mass of the system. And as I say, it's negative because its effect is to do that um, velocity vector, uh, angular velocity vector coming out of the paper. So, um, I substitute in values for, for here, I get this, I simplify and I get that. Which, if you look carefully at the previous expression we had there, this term, which was on the left-hand side before, is the same term but now on the right-hand side. So clearly we're going to end up with omega the same as before and it's into the paper. Thank you.